Hi everybody, welcome back to From the Anvils, West Ham United's official YouTube channel with me, James. It is time for the aftermath where it finished West Ham United nil, Fulham 2 at the London Stadium. A very uninspiring and very bad result for West Ham, which has greatly damaged our chances of getting European football next season. It's too much of the same narrative really, for West Ham. And this has been going on for too many years where we've had a chance to jump up a place or two in the league table because of other results going in our favour and then we don't capitalise on it. And that only makes things harder for us down the line. Not at least because we don't have very many games left in the season and time is, well, running out, uh, even if you don't want to admit it. Um, this game, what really did bother me was how bad the defence and midfield were overall. Um, the lack of depth really shows. The lack of intensity showed. And Fulham had two really easy goals, both scored by Pereira. I'll go into the team lineups and go into this very quickly. Fabianski was in goal. So far, Emerson as fullbacks. Aguirre had to come in in this game with Mavropanos partnering him as well. There were doubts that Mavropanos would even feature in this because he had to go under fitness tests. He may have picked up a knock in the Europa League Ty. Alvarez and James Will-Prowse were the midfielders with Kudus and Paketar acting as the wingers. Danny Ings is the number 10 and Antonio up top. Now, I'm starting to say this, but people are just going to say that they want Danny Ings to play because it's just another attacking option. But it's not inspiring again, is it? It's not someone who really gets me off my seat. No offence to him. Yes, one could argue that he needs more chances this season, but it's not something that gets me thrilled. It's not something that I really want. And in theory, he's playing out of position because we have to fill in the gaps. Antonio immediately hit over from eight yards out. And he had a chance where it was cut across the goal and he blasted it over. If he'd have just kept it down, he could have scored and the events would have changed in the game. Pereira scored after nine minutes to make it 1-0 to Fulham. I don't know what Mavropanos is doing, but he like clears the ball in the box straight to Pereira, who just taps it in. Uh, West had more of the ball, I suppose, in that half and tried to work it into the box. There are conflicting opinions as to whether that really was an awful half or not. It wasn't good or acceptable to me, but it wasn't the most shocking. Because... We did work the ball a lot. The midfield possessed the ball a lot and just tried to move it into the box, but no one could get in there. The only two players that could hold their heads high from that half and actually throughout the whole game were Fabianski and Kudus. They played like they were worthy of playing European football next season. Everyone else just coasted around too much. Fabianski made some fantastic saves to deny players. Kudus was threatening. A lot of the time. And who's saying that he's been poor the last few games? I don't know. Fulham got us right where they wanted us. They pulled our players out. Pulled our players out. And then got into the positions after that to make the ball move. Our midfielders just looked off. They couldn't keep the ball down. They couldn't complete passes. Pakatar, I'm going to have to say it, was awful. I'm going to say it again. This guy is the worst player on the team when he's bad. When he's good, he's a vital part of the machine. He's not a well-oiled cog in our machine right now, though. He's just very, very lost. He makes reckless tackles and gets booked every game. He doesn't seem to be fully focused. And he's lacking a lot of his own abilities in games these days. Straight out of the jump for the second half, Fabianski made a crucial save to deny Iwobi. And Mavropano started to struggle physically and in the game, so he had to come off in place of Kurt Zuma. Not an inspiring sub, again. And I was looking at the substitutes bench and I was actually thinking, you know, if we had Ben Rama and Fornal still and didn't loan out Flynn Downs, those are excellent options to have off the bench still. But we don't have them. Pereira was lucky to stay on the pitch, actually. Because he went quite high on Pacatar's knee. Lucky he wasn't red carded. Antonio started to drift to the left a lot more in this game. 
There was a double change made. Johnson Suchek on for Sofal and James Ward Prowse. Sofal didn't really have that amazing of a game. Um, so Johnson made quite a big error. Anyway, he doesn't trap back enough. Um, Fulham counters and it's an easy tap in for Pereira to get a brace and it's 2-0 Fulham and it's game over. That point. Seven goals we have conceded to them in the space of this season and scored none in, none in our favour. Tried to change our look a little bit, I think. At that point, you're just chasing shadows. But I do want to talk about what happened in stoppage time. George Earthy comes on for his West Ham debut, yeah? Big moment for this teenager. He and Alvarez tried to both head a ball and they clashed heads and Earthy went down out cold. He had to be stretched off. Not a nice way to, for you, to have your debut go. Thankfully, he has been discharged from hospital since and he's okay. But that was scary for him. Um, hope George Earth is going to be okay though. That's a really, really good thing. That's one bright light in this, that he's fine. The performance though was awful. Absolutely wrong of us. And, you know, things have to be said. Obviously. What needs saying won't be said. Though, by the manager. That's what worries me. He's not gonna... Say what to the players, I think, what others would. What us fans would. He always comes out with the same stuff like, Oh, yeah, it's it wasn't bad, it wasn't that bad. I thought it started quite well. And that, it, it just glosses over it. The other shame about Earthy's injury was some of the responses on Twitter, notably from a certain channel that you know that I despise, saying how uh, Moyes took advantage of Earthy's injury to gloss over the game and take away from the poor performance. Don't be freaking stupid. Who the hell says things like that? You're vile. Taking some kid's potentially serious injury as a way to, you know... Collateral for the loss, or whatever you want to say. Say, oh yeah, David Moyes didn't give a shit that his that his own player got injured. Yeah, I think he did. It's like saying, oh yeah, David Moyes didn't clap on the thirty eighth minute for the DT thirty eight foundation. Oh, does that mean that he doesn't give a shit about testicular cancer? <laughs> Morons. Might do a separate video and exposing these kind of channels actually just some of the stuff they say because it's it's vile i do youtube because i enjoy it not to spread hate other people do sadly those people yeah well in the video you best be prepared for me to not hold back